This is the story of 18 students in their very first philosophy class. This video is my salute to these brave students who learned how to listen to viewpoints that conflicted with their own and who learned how to detect hidden assumptions. I especially want to congratulate them for entertaining doubt as a necessary condition in their search for truth and wisdom. In the philosophy class, it's really our intense discussions. Um, when, I'm think, when I'm sitting at home thinking about stuff, I'm, I'm really going to remember the way we try to answer difficult questions like what is love or why can't we be good at our intense arguments we had during class for the sports of like hearing other opinions from each other and seeing things to other people's point of view. So what I'm going to remember in a year from now about our philosophy class at WIC is I think, well, something that struck me was also the, uh, the veil of ignorance because it really made me see how I would treat others and how others should be treated because you don't know what you are, so why would you put laws on other people when you could possibly be under those laws? What I'm going to remember in one year from this class would actually be um, faculty the whole entire class itself because I learned so much and it, it is my favorite class in all these five years that I've had in WIC. Um, we kind of grew and we had a bond with like some classmates in the class and we got to know how everyone thinks and I got a new point of view on uh, well, nihilism and existentialism that really made me see how I perceive life to be and how I think of everything. And, I'm probably going to remember this for the rest of my life. So. Well, I think teenagers should take this class is because it helps them truly identify who they are. And I think the whole objective in a philosophy class is basically to help you find the answers. Um, Alright, so this year, taking philosophy was a really memorable experience because it's a different class. Not everyone gets a chance to take this kind of class. And I think that uh, two years from now, I'm still going to remember it. And I think that leaving this class, I'm still going to be able to think in a philosophical way, looking at both sides of situations. Surprise! <laughs> What's wrong? I don't get it. What's wrong? Orly, you flat out lied to me. You told me you were leaving to Vancouver today. Yeah, but I was lying to make you happy. No, Orly, you lied to me and lying is always wrong. What do you mean lying is wrong? I personally believe that if I bring the most happiness to the most amount of people, lying should be tolerated. Especially in a situation like this. I completely disagree. I believe that people should tell the truth no matter what the consequences for the situation. You, you are the devil. You believe in utilitarianism, just like Satan. So we go from me making you a beautiful surprise party to me being the devil? I just can't trust you anymore because I'll never know if you're lying or not. But I'm lying for a good cause. So what if my mother died in the hospital call and you answered, would you lie me to maximize my happiness? But Alex, this is completely different. We're not talking about death, we're talking about celebration. Nonetheless, you're going to have to learn the rule of theory, which means your duty is to tell the truth no matter what the consequences are. I'm sorry, Alex? No, get away. How can I be with you if I don't trust you? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like the movie? I thought it was brilliant. A really good movie. Yeah, I also liked it, but it wasn't very realistic. Yeah, Jacob, the main character, was having a lot of trouble at school with all of his friends. And it was amazing to see that he was able to just drop out of reality and go to the carefree imaginary world of Fredonia forever. Yeah, that would be great if people were able to just escape all their problems. But that's impossible. That's not part of life. I think it's alright to escape reality sometimes, but we always have to come back. Yeah, but escaping from the truth will only lead you in the wrong direction. But if you live life in reality, in reality, you know what you have and you know the truth. It's like the heathens. They are people who live life to the fullest without regard for conventional morality. They value things that feel good. Oh yeah, it's like that guy Epicurus. He was a man who believed that the secret to living a good life is making choices that will bring you pleasure. Oh yeah, he was the guy who was against Zeno's stoic view. What does stoicism mean again? A stoic person is someone who accepts everything that happens without any emotion. All right, well going back to the hedonist, to see life as a pursuit of pleasure can be an attempt to escape reality. That's exactly what Jacob did in the movie. Yeah, that's right. 
Anyway, I think we both agree that in reality, you may be in a bad situation, but the best thing to do is to just try and make it the best it can be. Yeah, I completely agree. The movie was good and all, but that's not real life. Yeah. Je crois qu'on est perdu. Tu niaises, c'est pas pour un tourner à gauche parce que tout le monde tourne à droite. Mais ben, j'ai vu de la lumière à gauche et j'ai cru que c'était Dieu qui m'appelait. Mais la lumière c'était pas Dieu, c'était mon flashlight. Mais non, il est perdu grâce à toi. Oh wow! How great is this water bottle? The shape is so unique, the color is so vibrant. What do you think? I think it's a water bottle. I think Ted sells them for a dollar actually down there. What? It's clearly art. <laughs> it's been designed by someone famous. I'm wrong? You're wrong. How, how could I be wrong? It's what I think. What's beautiful to you? What do you, what do you think is beautiful? Well, art's beautiful. You're... Anyone that happens to disagree is just wrong. Disagree, they were wrong. Okay. Why couldn't we just agree to disagree? So you're telling me that you're strong, you believe in God? Yeah, don't you? Uh, no. What does God have to do with this? This is nature. He's got everything to do with this. No, nature and God are two different things. I don't even believe in God anyway. He's just a scapegoat. Someone you can blame all your problems on. How could you say that? Who do you turn to when you're looking for answers? God causes more problems than he actually solves. He doesn't answer any questions. Well, hold on a sec. So you're an atheist? Call me whatever you want. I don't believe in God. Look around you. If you think God is perfect, does this look like a perfect world to you? You can't solve all the problems. Do you ever hear the expression, you can pick your battles? I can love without God. He doesn't make a difference in my life anyway. Whatever it is, is in God, and nothing can be or be conceived without God. Uh, that's Spinoza's philosophy. I'm more of a Friedrich Nietzsche type of philosopher. The supreme being. Stop being so rational. From the streets to the shores, or from peace to the wars. I write upon the page to gauge how I think about my rage when I'm on stage. Looking for some meaning, not achieving, misbelieving, deceiving. Still, I'm searching for the reason. Why the hell am I even breathing? But I'm a rock till